Hi, I'm Charles. And I'm Susie. We're the Moments, and we just got a Ford Transit that we're going to turn into a camper. Thanks for watching. Well, you met my wife, uh, and I'd like to just give you a few introductory remarks before this series gets going. I promise you won't have anything like this again. In the future episodes, it'll be focused on one certain part of the build of the project. To just let you know, I'm a retired elementary music teacher. I turn 69 in a couple of weeks. It's hard to believe. I was an elementary music teacher for 37 years and loved my career, and I'm not mechanically gifted at all, but I'm learning. My wife is one who's most gifted in that area. Um, so if you've been watching me, you know that, uh, and I've got over 1.6 million views, you know that I love runaway campers, and so you might be thinking, well, what's going to happen with your runaway camper? Well, let me go over to my camper, and I'll explain to that to you real briefly. Uh, this is our second runaway camper. We had a 4x8 and this is the 6x8 Range Runner. It's a fiberglass PVC composite. And some of you are wondering, so are you getting rid of this? No, we're not. Um, it just dawned on us on our last trip this summer. We were in Colorado for a few weeks. It's just hard to keep things organized in the back of the van. And so I was thinking to myself, you know what, I've got that nice F-150 4x4 that I really don't use as a truck anymore. And so I decided to go back to the dream I had of, over a year ago of doing a Ford Transit van conversion. So uh, we are going to do a combo sometimes. We'll use this and this will be our dedicated bedroom, very comfortable. We're actually going to put in a bigger bed, uh, but it's got a max air fan and a vent. Air conditioning works great with my EcoFlow lithiums. I can actually run my uh, AC if I wanted to if we don't have shore power. But there will be trips where we'll just use the, the Transit. I was going to get the small one, but got found out with this 148 so it's giving us even more room for um, uh, extra, a couple extra beds and so that's why sometimes it'll be just a transit and then sometimes it'll be the combo just depending on the trip or if we have grandkids with us or whatever so that's how this got started so the basics this is a 2018 Ford Transit 250 it's the non EcoBoost uh, 3.7 V6 and it's the 148 inch so it's a little longer it's not the super extended but we were, I was originally going to look for the standard, the shorter one, the 130, whatever it is. But this came up and I couldn't turn it down. Uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful van that was so well taken care of. 34,000 miles, medium roof, um, and just a beautiful shape. A few scratches here and there, but that's about it. Not, mu not much at all. So, uh, and now we're really happy now that we figured out uh, how we're going to lay things out. We're glad to have that 148 inch wheelbase. Um, one thing, I, I here's the things you should not expect. Um, there's a lot of cliches out there, and I know it, it's a fun thing. Tr there are trends, but a lot of the van builds, they kind of blur the line between vlogging. And I've got some channels that I like, people that travel in campers or vans or sail. They're fun. It's slice of life. I expect that. But some of the van builds, they kind of blur that line, and um, sometimes they just take too long because they're making coffee. I won't be making coffee for you. Uh, or they do the waking up in the day, or they explaining, or they take you to Home Depot. You're not going on any shopping trips. That's a waste of your time and mine. Uh, no muscle shirts. Well, I don't have the muscles, but and tattoos. Uh, no wife in skimpy clothing. And you know what I mean by that. Uh, there'll be no music while talking. I know that's aggravating. Um, and I won't be doing the typical "What's up?" or "Hello YouTube" or "Hand to the lens" thing. I. And, you know, people want to do that, that's fine, and I know there are younger people than me, but I'm, I'm, like I said, I want to kind of avoid some of those cliches. I want this to be more of a step-by-step -step, um, documentation of what I'm doing, and you're going to kind of be learning with me. Um, as far as um, Amazon links, I'm not going to be doing that. I may give you Amazon links, but they, I, I'm not doing an Amazon store, I'm not doing any of that. Um, uh, I will wait till the episode's been on for a while before I monetize, and I haven't monetized until just a week or two ago some of my more popular videos, and I have over 1.6 million, so I could have done it long ago, but I uh, just recently started doing that a little bit. Um, I will have occasionally an affiliate link. Artlist is it's the company I get my music from, gorgeous music. And I'll be doing a video about our list as well. So there is, there'll be an affiliate link down there. But I will not be doing sponsored videos. So, you know, um, and that leads to me mentioning corporate partners. I had some companies that either I'd worked with doing a review or I saw their product and I thought, hmm, what if they would be involved? More people told me uh, no than yes. But a few came on strong, especially my primary corporate partner is EcoFlow. And they've already supplied me with two EcoFlow Delta 1300 watt units four solar folding solar panels and they're sending me all their R600 models because this 
build is going to be based around EcoFlow power. Um, I, I'll be able to run for a long time without even recharging using just my lithiums. I am wiring this for shore power because I'm going to have a microwave and a coffee pot, but the EcoFlow Deltas can already run those for me. So we'll be fine either way. And I'm also not going to be doing plumbing uh, in the bathroom over here in the sink um, that would require winterizing. So it's probably going to be all up here with, um, um, I will have a hole in the floor with a drain so I can drain it out to a uh, six, seven gallon jug or do it right here with the sink or with the shower. Uh, there will be a porta potty as well and you'll, you'll be finding out about all that. So most of my corporate partners, there are things that I'll be using. The only thing that I'm, uh, and I've already started, the kill mat is uh, sound deadening. That's actually part of the physical build. But everything else are accessories that are quite useful, including Iceco with a VL60 uh, dual 12-volt uh, fridge they sent me. Heavy duty, it'll be right in here under a cabinet. And so you'll be seeing me mentioning um, different corporate partners now and then, and I'll have reviews of them that you can click and go to those. But the, they won't be within an episode per se. Uh, and speaking of episodes, they're going to be 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I'm not dragging. I'm not going to drag things out. By there will be occasionally a five-minute update, and I'm not going to give you a promise a day that there will be an episode. You know, there should be a weekly episode, and uh, at the minimum, if if I'm kind of held up for some reason, a, sh a three to five, six-minute short update video saying, "Hey, here's what I'm doing now. This is what's coming up." Um, and so that, that's kind of my plan for all this, and uh, I hope you find it interesting. I hope you find this useful. This first episode, let's take a look at um, Susie and I kind of planning, because we had, until about two weeks before we bought this, I'd never been in a Ford Transit. <laughs> and so now that we, once we got it, then we stood in it and kind of put tape here and there, and then I made, you'll see me making cardboard mock-ups, and that really helped us plan where we were going to put everything. So that's kind of going to be this episode, and, and I've actually filmed two or three other episodes so you can expect episode two and three to come up pretty soon. So just be on the lookout for that. If you'd like to subscribe, that's fine. Um, I don't make a big deal about that. But um, if you'd like to know when they're coming up, that's the best way to find out. And um, I guess that's it. Let me sh let me show you how we did our initial first plan. Well, today is September 1. Maybe it's a good day to start actually physically working on this build. Um, the floor is pretty clean. I'll be cleaning it a bunch of times. But I think what I'm going to be doing today, since nothing has come in yet and my sound editing is probably going to still be two or three days away, which is what I would be doing right now. So uh, my wife's going to come out. We're going to kind of decide how tall and how deep we want these sofas. And so I'm going to start making uh, cardboard uh, cutouts of those. And I, I've got five big sheets, and I'll show you a photo of that right now. And then I'm trying to save as much of that as I can. And then I've also got a roll of uh, thick cardboard that I can use when I'm doing uh, templates of the floor before I commit it to the big cardboard. So uh, mock-ups, and then I want to get the floor because I need, I'm going to go ahead and order vinyl because I'm going to get one big sheet of it so it's one continuous piece all over. I guess I better get going. So I'll get my wife out here, and you may see us a little bit and then you'll see me piece by piece putting together some mock-ups and we'll see what I can get th done this afternoon. So I brought Susie out here to give me a rough idea. It's not super precise just yet, but uh, she's going to tell you how she's gonna, thinking about measuring this because she gets priority um, on it, ha it. Her feet don't reach the floor in some situations, so we're going to make sure of that. But we know that this will be back we know that the floor is going to be raised up, so the wall will be roughly here. So we're going to account for that. But she's just going to talk generally about measuring for the, the sofa, size. the sofa with the cushion. Right. Okay. And um, when you start out, measure from the uh, back of your knee down to the floor where your foot hits the floor, and take that measurement. That's where you're going to be comfortable sitting. But then you have to take into account the cushion. So like um, the cushion is 17 and a half inches tall, but the bench is only 15 and a half inches tall. So if you have a four inch cushion, take that into consideration. Also, um, figure out if you want a soft cushion or a hard cushion, what's, whatever you want. Then for the back, um, you would measure from where your backside hits the wall to the, again, the back of your knee. That's how far you want it to be uh, to the back, but then you're going to have a cushion there too. So you want to add, however, if you have four inch cushion, you add four inches. 
Uh, does that make sense? To get to the wall. To get to the wall, yeah. Right. Pretend like the wall is closer. Yeah. But anyway, um, that's how we do it. Because I like a firm back, and I like it right up against me. But some people would want it back right. farther and put pillows so they can relax. But so. you don't, you want, don't want to feel like you're three years old and your feet are swinging and not yeah, touching the floor. Yeah, half the time my feet don't reach right. the floor. Right, so we're going we're to take care of that in this build. Yeah. And <laughs> thank you for your help. You're welcome. Now I need to figure out how tall to make the countertop. Standard countertop is 36 inches tall and usually I stand on a stool. So guys, I am actually thinking about making this countertop over here 30 inches so I can do a cutting. I cut lots of vegetables. And then the countertop over here by the sink to be more like, more like standard, maybe a little less, like 35 or 34 because I don't want to be leaning over doing dishes. That's what I'm thinking, so we'll see how it goes. Well, this does look like the scene of a crime, a cardboard massacre. And let me show you what the result was. So let me start back here. And I gotta tell you, I'm really glad we mocked it up. I haven't seen too many people do this. Some of you have watched uh, Humble Road, and he's a quirky guy, but boy, is he meticulous. And he does mock-ups like this, but he has wood inside. These are just taped together just to give us an idea. And one thing we figured out right off the bat, I made the first box there uh, that has the fridge, and then it's going to have the, um, the cooking area. We were measuring. We decided, why not come closer to the back so the door can easily shut. I know that there's a release here for the... Um, spare tire, so I will make allowance for that. The floor I'll cut out a place with a finger hole and lift it so you can get to that. So I, I understand that. But we decided might as well use the space. So what that's given us now is this sofa is six foot two. I'm five foot ten. I'll be good sleeping on this. And then this one is four and a half. But we want to utilize this space. So let me show you this. Under the cushion will be this panel and can't get it, there we go. Can't get it down from here, but you get the idea. Um, there'll be this, obviously laying flat, and um, so that'll give us two six foot two sections. It's four and a half, and these are, uh, this is about 24, that's about 24, and it's about 23 there. So we've, we've got a lot of space here, so we can easily sleep here, and uh, if we have one of our little grandkids, they can sleep there. So that's going to work out well. And the plan is I will have um, a ledge here for it to sit on. I don't think it, with the ledge there will be no need for legs or anything like that. Um, but we'll have the cushions and it will make a, a nice sleeping area. Uh, on the times where we either choose not to sleep in the camper for some reason, we just pull in late someplace and we just decide, let's just, you know, especially if it's a Cracker Barrel or something, we might just stay in here and sleep and not worry about getting out into the, the camper, especially if it's downpouring or something like that, or uh, the trip now and then where we don't even take the camper. So um, there will be uh, cabinets up above, and I'm not really worried about mocking those up right now, but I think we're going to kind of live with this for uh, a day or two just to kind of think about what we're doing, but we really think this is going to work well. Let me uh, take the camera inside, and I'll show you the other end. So now when we open up the van door... This will uh, stick out. Some people actually come over farther, but I think that's what we're going to go with right there. And then this is the uh, cooking area, and I just just drilled some sample holes, and that's where that the Iceco VL60D will slide out, and it needs 31 inches, so it's going to be able to it'll it'll fit right here just fine, and then it will slide back in, and so that's going to work out well, I think. And then here is. There's the sofas, and then here we go with the um, sink with a countertop that's going to hinge uh, here and lift up. If Susie decides she wants one, I'll put a hinged area there. By the way, on the sofa there, on the faces, will be a couple of lagoon mounts. And um, don't know how many, I think we'll have two lagoon mount here. And so here's that padded seat with the three-point seat belt. Uh, lid lifts up the front this front panel will slide out out comes the porta potty or use the porta potty and it's in a shower pan that seat uh, will lift up and then 
Um, I saw a guy, 70 Savage, and he put um, uh, strong magnets in various places un above the wood. Very, very clever. And so we're going to have those up there to hold the shower curtain from Explorer Outfitters. And so um, you'll be seeing that before too long. So that'll hang down. And both the sink and the shower will drain to a common um, gray tank. Under here will be two or three seven gallon jugs, two with fresh water. One will serve as a gray tank, but there will be a small gray tank under and a way to run it into a campground sewer as well. So that's kind of the look right now. And I think it's going to be a good plan. There'll be some tweaking, but nice open walkway. We're really excited about having that. Well, it's uh, two or three days later, and um, we just decided to leave it. And we've been in here a lot looking around, and turns out we like what we planned. It's a lot of seating, that's for sure, big long sofas. But again, we're not living in it full time, and uh, we decided to give ourselves a nice big sleeping space if we choose to camp without our little camper. And we'll do a combination, both with the camper and without. And my wife especially likes uh, all this countertop. And I, did, I just didn't bother to mock up these cabinets. Uh, we kind of know what we want. Um, and we don't need tons and tons of storage. I mean, more storage is good, but... Um, so that's where we are. So I'm going to take this all out. I'm not really saving it. Um, it just gave me an idea of where things are going to be. And so I roughly know where the outlets are going to be. And um, it's, I think this is a good thing to do. Not necessary, but I, I'm a visual learner, I think. So this just helped me keep my ideas flowing while looking at something that resembles what's going to be here. Out it goes. Well, there you go. There's episode one. Um, as I mentioned before, this will be the only time where I'm going to be yakking so much and I won't have to give all the introductory uh, remarks, but I just felt like that was important time to kind of get started. And otherwise, from this point on, it'll be very focused and as short as possible showing you what I did. And thanks for watching.